working with concentrations in health science is actually pretty neat. So in this video, I will go over kind of the types of concentrations that are common. These are not all, but they will cover the majority of concentrations that you will see. So I have given several types here below. So you have first kind of percent type of concentrations. And these types of concentrations, for example, you may see as given something like this, 5.1% of a 250 milliliter medication. So I will explain what that actually means. The second type of concentration that you have is the unit rate concentrations. Now these do not only pertain always to just health science because they pertain to all kinds of different fields. And here are some examples. So for instance, you might have 0 0.05 milligrams per milliliter. So that's one example or one and a half grams per liter. And it might be of some type of medication, for instance. And then the last one is kind of general types of rate concentrations. And those general ones that you see, which is the, the last one here that I'm underlining here or highlighting, these are kind of written out in words as, for instance, 25 grams of protein in a four ounce drink. So it just tells us how much we have per a certain amount. Or another one could be 90 micrograms of medication of some type uh, per two pills. Okay, so that maybe a patient is taking. So let's tackle these types of so first percent concentration. So we have, let me scroll down a little bit here. Okay, so for percent type of concentrations, if someone comes along, and I will take the example that we just had, and says that we have 5.1% okay, within a 250 milliliter, let's say, solution of some type. Well, all it is saying is that for the 250 milliliters, okay, there is some medication which is dissolved within, and 5.1% of it is actually the medication. And the rest is basically just simply water. So if you were thinking of this, okay, so if you had, let's say some kind of a drink, okay, and so within this drink, maybe I'll use, you know, blue here, okay, to designate the drink, then this particular solution, what it is saying is, it is 5.1%, okay, within this entire amount of 250 milliliters, Okay, that might be in total. So you do have to know how to take a percentage okay, of uh, the full amount. So that would simply be we convert our percent back into decimal, and that will be 0 0.051. Okay, so don't forget that we divide okay, by 100%, okay, or just shift the decimal over two places okay, to get our decimal, and then we multiply by 250 milliliters, and that's going to give us and tell us exactly how much did we have of the medication inside there. So if I do this, so let me just pull up the calculator. So if I have 0 0.051 multiplied by 250, okay, so I have 12.75, 12.75 12 milliliters of the medication inside. So not everything, if within the 250 milliliters is actually the medication, okay? So these concentrations can be, as you can see, 5.1%. Common one, for example, for um, salient solution is 0.9%, okay? So that's for salt water. And so there's many other concentrations. So this is one type Okay, of an example, and this just tells you okay, how to obtain the actual amount of the medication. The second type okay, that we had here is the unit rate. So in unit rates, what we deal with is not percent per se, but they actually tell us how much we have. And this one, 
is much easier because we don't have to do much calculations here. So if they tell us, okay, so let's take that first example, which says 0 0.05 milligrams, okay, and it says per, let's say, milliliter, okay, so they have something of that nature. So all that this is saying is that whatever solution this may be, and notice that it is, so the key point here is that it is per milliliter, Okay, so this means it's per one. So what it's telling you is that the dissolved medication within this solution only has okay, 0 0.05 milligrams for every one milliliter of that solution. So that is it. Okay, so if you had, you know, one milliliter, you can, again, you can imagine this, let's say it was like some, some drop, okay, that we had here, okay, so there would be only a small speck, okay, that would be dissolved within here, and, you know, it's some kind of a dissolved format, okay, or maybe it's some kind of a reaction inside there, that there is very small amount, okay, it's only 0 0.05 milligrams, okay, for every one milliliter okay so if this is one milliliter as a whole okay those little dots that you see would make up this actual uh, medication inside and when you're looking at this and when we say it is a unit rate it is called a unit rate because it's per one okay so this right here when we say it is per one okay that is considered a unit rate now the other example that i showed you here which is one and a half grams per liter okay so if i write this one out so if i have one and a half grams okay so it says per liter so this is per liter so this again just simply means that i have now you can change this okay if you like okay so i will just change it for instance to a decimal because a half is 0.5 so this just says 1.5 grams for every one liter. Now, one liter is clearly a thousand times as much as a milliliter. So again, you have a very, very small amount, okay, of this, okay, medication. So it's a concentration. But remember that in health, these concentrations don't need to be very large, okay? It just depends on what impact they have on our body. Um, and I will mention that these unit rates, again, it's unit because it's per one, don't just exist in, in health. There are many instances that you have. For instance, you know, a, a typical one, let's say if you're driving and you have 100 kilometers per hour or, you know, maybe, okay, you know, 60 miles per hour. So sometimes miles per hour is written in this way. What this simply means is 60 miles, okay, for every one hour okay so when you have these driving distances depending where you are maybe if you're in the united states you you know you're going to be using miles per hour okay and if you're in for instance maybe canada or something you're going to be using kilometers per hour these are again called unit rates because they simply tell us okay that we will travel for instance 100 kilometers in one hour of time okay and this one would mean we would travel 60 miles in one hour of time. So unit rates exist everywhere. So you have to be comfortable with those. The last type of concentration that we have is just regular rate concentration. So not necessarily per unit. So for instance, if I take these two examples, let me copy them and bring them down. So these last ones here, so these are just rate concentrations. And I will copy these in. Well, what they tell us is that how concentrated okay, is some item within another item. So the first one right there, it just tells us that if we take a four ounce drink, and by the way, for those who may not know, 
So one pound is equal to 16 ounces. And this is from the um, imperial uh, system of units. Okay, so again, one pound equals 16 ounces. And it's common, so for example, for a drink, okay, if you have four ounce drink, okay, and let's say maybe it's an energy drink, or maybe it's a protein drink, okay, or a supplement, okay, that a patient will be taking in. So they will have a certain amount of protein, certain amount of carbohydrates, certain amount of fat. And this is just telling us that if you take this drink, okay, so whatever, you know, drink it is, I don't know, I'm just trying here like little semi bottle here okay so whatever drink we have inside then it is telling us that inside this drink and this drink in total is four ounces okay it is simply saying that we have 25 grams inside so one way of representing this in terms of math you can say that this is 25 grams per okay every four ounces and now notice you can change this to a unit rate because if we do the division, so if we take 25 and divide it by 4, so if I take 25 and divide it by 4, okay, I will get 6.25 grams for every one ounce okay, within that drink. So this is considered a unit rate because it's per one ounce, and this is just considered a regular rate. Okay, because it's not per one, it's per four. So that's the meaning. And the second example that you have there, okay, let's say if it is some medication within pills, well, this is just telling us that we have 90 micrograms of some medication for okay, two pills, okay, which again, we can change to a unit rate because if we divide 90 by two, we're gonna get 45 micrograms per, okay, one pill. So that is, again, just telling us how much we have, okay, per a certain amount. And these are the most common concentrations that we typically run into. So those are percent-based concentrations, unit rate concentrations, and general rate concentrations. So this is just an introduction, and you can watch now the videos which are using these concentrations to solve particular problems. All right, thank you for watching.